This is a program from the end of Chapter 16. It's Programming Exercise 2, and it was originally based on one in Chapter 8, 8, 7, which was a menu-driven fraction calculator. But for our purposes, we're only going to add and divide in this one because what we're really looking at is accept handling exceptions such as divide by zero and invalid input. So I've already got the main program finished, um, including all the functions and the variables and the try catch blocks. What I don't have is the class file. So right now you can see that I have a function for adding and dividing the fractions. I have one that prints the menu, one that actually allows the user to input the numerator and denominators for the fractions and then to show the results and to get each number. So in the main program I have declared my variables and then I call the menu which is a function down here toward the end. Here's the menu where it just prints add, divide, fractions, or exit the program. Once the menu has been printed then the user of course is going to make their choice and it's saved in the variable choice. Then I've got, well choice is not equal to 3. Um, for fraction 1, get the fraction. For fraction 2, get the fraction. Get the appropriate numerators and denominators for each fraction. And then it goes down through the switch statement, either adding, subtracting, or um, exiting the program. And then the default, of course, is an error message. So in case 2, divide fractions, I've just manually put in a try again message. Um, and that's it, just if, if the flag is false to try it again. And then, of course, the default is an invalid selection. Add fractions is pretty straightforward, so I didn't have to do much in that. But divide is a little different because we do have um, division by zero that could occur and crash the program with a runtime error. So I'm going to come back and, and uncomment this line once we have the class built because it's going to be a call to the class division by zero. And then the catch, of course, is division by zero, passing the object in. And, of course, what is the object you use in a try-catch block back to the class or actually in an internal call using C's built-in error handlers. So down in get fraction, we're getting a number. But here's another try-catch block where I'm looking and I'm checking to see if the denominator is a zero. If it is, you want to throw a zero. And then the catch is that the zero is being passed and the denominator must be non-zero. There's another one further on down here. Um, but here are my uh, result operation. And of course, I've got a default invalid operation here. But in get number, I do have another try catch block where the string phrase here, str, is the input stream is in a fail state. So here's my try block where you're entering an integer. But if anything but an integer is entered, it's going to throw that stream. string. Input stream is in a fail state. Then it would catch it, and it would tell the user that it's restoring the string, which it does with the clear and the ignore. So that's basically what the main program does. And there's some try catch blocks there. But what we're going to do now is actually add the class file that we'll need for the line that was commented out that actually is down further in the program. So I'm going to add an item, a header file that's called division by zero. And I'll put the class definition in that one for that call. And it's, of course, doing the same thing as my try catch blocks with my internal calls to C's error handlers. But I'm going to go ahead and include IO stream. Also, I need string because of my messages. standard namespace and my class is division by zero and this is short <laughs> so because it is so short I am going to just build out my code right at the top.
my constructor is division by zero. And then I have another can't type today. Another constructor, the default one is just the message division by zero. This time I'll pass the string in. Here's my what object. And what I want to do, of course, is to return the message. And the only private variable is message. So again, this is kind of redundant since C has this built-in <coughs> divide by zero operator, but it shows you how to set it up in a class. So there's my class file. So now I want to go back to main and actually add my header for division by zero. Division by zero. And then I had the call actually just commented out down in my code here. Right here in my divide fraction. So now if the second number or the denominator is a zero, on this one I'm going to throw division by zero, which is a call back to the class division by zero. So Let's build it and be sure that we have no errors. And it was clear, so I can run it. And let's divide some fractions because add is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to choose two from the menu, and it's asking me to enter my numerator and the denominator, so that's one half, and then divided by three-fourths and one-half divided by three-fourths is four-sixths and my menu's up again I should have cleared the screen so I'm going to divide again this time putting in invalid characters so I'm going to put in a G here and the input stream is in the fail state but now it's restored so I can actually enter the correct integer and then three and let's go zero on this because it would give us a divide by zero and the denominator must be non-zero so enter an integer four and it gives me the division and then three to exit the program so now you've seen some try catch blocks using the built-in C error handlers and we also created one in a class file and so you could do it either way. I use the built-in operators whenever necessary uh, because it's less code to write, but you can build any kind of an exception error that you want to in a class.